Welcome to the fifth episode of the Church's Times. Today we're going to look at uh, three reports uh, that are from the USERF News Digest. That's the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom. This was uh, posted on the 24th, so three days ago. There's a number of things. Uh, there's a, a focus on Algeria here. There's a report, an annual report, uh, some events coming up, uh, some news items of interest. You surf itself in the news. Um, and we'll actually look at one of those articles. And then this list, top news from around the world, is where I pull the other two. Now, as you can see, there is quite uh, a number of different articles here to choose from. I obviously cannot go through all of them, uh, so I picked just um, uh, two uh, from this list. So if uh, you are interested, you can subscribe to this digest itself, and the link will be in the description. So let's look at the first story here that comes from this. Um, obviously, Afghanistan is something uh, that's uh, nearly unavoidable these days. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a report from India uh, uh, expressing um, some concern here and here. Uh, as, as many countries uh, are, are facing getting their own citizens out of Afghanistan. India uh, is certainly among them. They have had people there uh, helping the country uh, in development, uh, but uh, most of the Indians there are Sikhs and, and or Hindus. Um, and so obviously they would not necessarily be welcomed by the Taliban. So pray for them. And it, everybody obviously uh, in Afghanistan. Pray for the Taliban. Miraculously, uh, they have uh, a change of heart. I know it, it seems unlikely, but God is bigger, uh, certainly, than they are. Uh, this next one is from China, so we're staying in Asia. It's a preschool directive from the Chinese Communist Party, and it's really, as this article says, an attempt at cultural genocide, imposing Mandarin uh, upon uh, the students as young as kindergartners, as it shows here, and that so minority languages throughout the country, Inner Mongolia, where they speak Mongolian, uh, Tibet, uh, Xinjiang, uh, different uh, languages that they speak there. But on one level, obviously, you'd think, well, it would be a good thing if everybody in the country speaks the same language. But this seems to be going above and beyond that, almost as if it's trying to exterminate. Uh, those other minority languages. Um, just a few years ago, Turkey finally eased up on their suppression of Kurdish. Uh, it, it, it was an attempt to get rid of that language in the country, but obviously people spoke it at home, um, but they finally lifted the restrictions of speaking it uh, in public. So uh, things can change and hopefully that uh, this this may not be the cultural genocide that it certainly uh, seems to be starting out as. Now, the last thing here, and I've only got a, a few seconds, <clears throat> is from North Korea, again, staying in Asia. Suppression of religion, bad and getting worse. This is probably not surprising uh, to any of us. Uh, uh, how how bad uh, can it get if it's already bad? Uh, but it basically, uh, Kim Jong-un is trying to uh, rid the country of anything that even uh, smells of religion. And it's not just Christians uh, who were, where did it go? There were about 250,000 in 1950, and that number has dwindled significantly, just a few thousand today. Uh, but this is also uh, aimed at uh, shamans, basically the indigenous uh, religion of the Koreas, um, and uh, other uh, 
uh, religions as well. Uh, so that wraps it up for now. Remember to keep uh, all these things in your prayers, your thoughts, um, and hopefully uh, this world will slowly uh, begin to improve. I will uh, see you on the other side with the uh, interview as we continue with the two young Afghani men. In this next section, they are addressing where they left off uh, concerning the Afghani soldiers, uh, quote unquote, uh, giving up. Anything else uh, about that in the next, the, the last few seconds here, you guys wanna add your personal thoughts about it? Uh, I would like to add uh, some, some stuff to it. Sure. Uh, I mean, in my opinion, uh, they were, uh, as uh, my, my brother said, they were bravest people in, on earth. That's what I, I, will, I would call them. Okay. Because uh, they would keep the civilian uh, 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 in uh, peace. And they would also do a lot of uh, things that do, do not harm the civilians uh, in Afghanistan. Um, and as you know, uh, as the war started, like as they started to capturing some of the provinces, uh, some of the people, they flew to Kabul or to, uh, to the place where there wasn't any uh, uh, capturing of Taliban. Uh, because the reason was because over there, you know, uh, war was really extreme on them and they right. were uh, for example, if there was explosion or anything, all the parts was uh, hitting their bodies. Like they were giving them injuries. Right, and right. the shrapnel. And... Yeah, or a bullet came and hit them. Uh, so it was a lot of uh, the civilian uh, civilians. They were really living in fear. Uh, so most of them they moved to, uh, like they flew to another. Uh, province to for safeties but they were uh, I would say in conclusion they were the bravest people and it took us you know 20 years to build up the army uh, in Afghanistan and I think that would be all right. yeah if, if we had the, the support if we had the supply support like I said earlier like no one could beat them like they go to war without a second thought they right. sacrifice their lives for each other. Like one person, like it's a, their, uh, their, their, their family, the safety of the people is worth more than their lives. So they're very brave people, like the bravest people I've ever seen in the world. Like, yeah. God I've, bless them. Yeah, I've pretty much heard the same thing from America soldiers who had fought alongside them um, that that they say pretty much the same thing you guys have said i want to ask you now about the reports that the president fled the country um the, the media here the angle seems to be that uh, out of cowardice um or or some ulterior motive like that what do you guys think i would like to talk about the the president that the media is going around about that he still billions of dollar uh and then he fled the country which is you no know, media you know it's not true everyone knows that the in the country in afghanistan that it's not true because this president was a very good president like he cared about the people he cared about economy he cared about uh uh, the future of the country. He was building dams, uh, pools, and uh, roads to help the country, the economy. So that he was uh, the money that Afghanistan was getting from the UN or NATO or neighboring country. It was all going uh, to charities, building roads, building dams, and building schools, colleges, and etc. For good purpose. Uh, the what i would like to tell the media is that uh, i was uh, it was not the president it was his subordinates which you know they were taking money for their self it's because 
they they did it because you know it's like basically the strong survive the weak dies that's how it right. was so they right. cared about, about themselves about they didn't really think about the future of afghanistan they were they were all like all right afghanistan is doomed i only need to think about myself what's going to happen to me to my family so they basically took all the money for themselves but the president and some of his subordinates you know they were like the and then they spent it for the good reason the money and yeah and what the 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 reason that um president uh fled the country because you know what happened to the uh president dr najib was the same thing like he said he was going to get hanged and then uh what he uh, uh, it was the same thing that was the reason right. but then he went on on live he said that he was not afraid of dead he he did it because he didn't want no bloodshed he didn't right. want no conflict he didn't want the civilian to suffer so he fled the country uh, he fled the country and uh he he was telling the people uh he was he was saying while well, he was in afghanistan he was saying that please brother sister stand with each other stand together be strong no one can dominate you if you stay strong if uh if you stay strong you focus on the future you folk you save the civilians no right. one can dom- no one can dominate you that's what he told the people and then people were not listening to them people were not uh uh people were like nah he's joking he's doing this he's doing this and then when he fled the country now everybody like protesting in afghanistan that please come back we need you you are like the mm-hmm. only president for us so the economy went down pretty fast also in like four days and when it went down like crazies right because so the, the taliban took over yes yes so if a dress or a, a dress a scarf or shoes anything that costs like 500 200 or 100 or something not dollar of kenny now it costs like 9000 10000 wow. or 8000 wow. yes yeah, so it dropped like crazy like people like they they're hungry you know people they're starving they don't have this much money you know to buy food like cuz there's a lot of poverty in in afghanistan and people can survive uh, without like money you know like without food without uh, without any help and the, it's only been four days that the economy went down this fast so yeah uh, that's that's pretty bad yeah hopefully it gets better soon we will leave it there for now have a great weekend and we will be back on monday see you then